Hey, what's up guys, Bobo Rail here, and today I've got the overdue combo breakdown for Isanzo's 13th and 14th dev blog. So hello everyone, apologies, I know this one is pretty late. I took the last week to go on vacation and saw a lot of cool stuff, but this video is about the dev blog, so let's get back to that. Number 13 was all about cosmetics, and 14 gave us a lot of real sustenance about the Sabatino map, so that's why I've decided to combine them and just quickly run through number 13. To start, we got some HD screenshots, the first of which being the Veteran Units Pack. Once again, all of this looks very faithful to history, and I think these look great, albeit simplistic. Extending past this, we have a nice graphic with two skins from the Alpine Units Pack. I really like the face covering and beard here, and I wonder if we'll see any areas with snow at the high altitudes. The next is the lineup for the Elite Units Pack, and while I think these look cool, I don't see many people using these Fez caps because they stand out a lot more in game. And I feel in games with that fast of a TTK, even small visibility differences can have a big effect. Finally, let's talk about the pre-order packs and pricing. The base game will cost $30 with a free pack of cosmetics to those who pre-order on console and to those who play during the first week of release on PC. To clarify, there are no pre-ordering options on Steam. There will be two special editions, but as of now, we don't know about their contents or pricing. So with cosmetics out of the way, we'll transition into the next dev blog. The primary focus of this one was Monte Sabatino, but this time we have a much more in-depth 1080p flyover of the entire map, which I want to heavily emphasize a thank you to whoever makes these dev blogs because this flyover and other images shown here give me much better background footage and give the whole community a better look at the map and its details. Overall, I love the look of this more desert environment, and the sector-based gameplay format seems like it will be a lot more action-packed and engaging than the game modes of previous entries. Now, the developers themselves mention how important good smoke screens are going to be here, but they also gave us a closer look at the barbed wire and terrain along the slopes of its mountain. Immediately, this looks like there's a good chance of foliage and solid cover being enough to get across these long sight lines, and this is likely where a wire cutter could prove incredibly useful, but we'll have to wait to gather some more information about their functionality and the limitations of them as utilities. Here, there's a quick comparison between the real-life picture and the in-game landscape, which once again just shows how dedicated the team is to historical and geographical accuracy. Now on the other end of the map, we also showcasing the slope the Italians will have to push down to get to the train and the main bridge, as well as one of the interiors of the houses. I'm really interested to see how many buildings will be enterable on the city of Gorizia, which we have a short teaser for here, as well as another dev blog coming shortly after this one. So now the last thing I have to show you guys here is a bolt action rifle that I'll just call the MS Model 1903. This is a rifle that was originally Greek, but ended up in the hands of some Austro-Hungarians come World War I. It's compatible with stripper clips and has a unique rotating spool magazine. Overall, I don't think that will affect its functionality very much, and it's still a bolt action, which kind of makes me wonder if slash how they will balance these various rifles to play differently from one another. Anyways, that's all I've got for you guys today. This has been Bobo Rail from the Christopher Beast channel, and I'll catch you all in the next one.